Hello everyone, hope you're doing fine. This is our first video session on thinking in Pine series. Uh, before we start our demonstration, I'd like to explain a few things about our initiative. Uh, in order to help trading community and PineScript developers, we have started this new series of short videos called Thinking in Pine. Uh, as, a, as, as part of this program, we try to include five to 10 minutes of videos dedicated to explaining particular concept or unique implementation of PineScript. Uh, we have our own list of topics to be covered. However, if you have something in your mind, uh, if you're not able to um, understand particular concept of fine script or struck at implementing few things, please reach out to us. If the subject is generic and benefits wider audience of coders, we're happy to include that in our list of videos to be made or prioritize this for the other topics. Uh, with this, let's start with our uh, current session on where, where and regular variables. Okay, so the var keyword here is, uh, it's a bit confusing when I first started uh, with pine code, um, the pine script. So because, um, so I, I, I'm familiar with other languages such as JavaScript where var means a generic variable, but in the context of pine script, var is not a generic variable, it's a special variable. So let's get on with an implementation or example here. So in this example, what we do is we'll try to implement OBV indicator. So there is also a built-in OBV, which is TA.OBV, which calculates um, the OBV uh, values. Um, and we try to, you know, calculate this and we try to develop this indicator by using these variables or in order to demonstrate these variables. So the logic of OBVs are pretty simple. So the logic will be something like this. So if um, the close is greater than previous close, so add volume to BV indicator. Or right, let's do this. Um, it starts with zero, zero initialize. So the OBV indicator starts with zero always. Okay. So and then on every bar, if the closes uh, close price is uh, greater than previous close, the volume gets added to OBV. And if uh, the close price is less than previous close. Um, remove volume from OBV indicator, right? So that's that's how it works. So the resulting um, series of OBV um, after adding and removing the volume based on the close price that gets plotted on the screen. Okay, so this is what it's. Uh, this is how it is calculated. So when you when you save this and when you apply this indicator, right now it's, I'm only plotting the built-in OBV. You can see that built-in OBV is being um, plotted here. So now let's try to calculate the same thing with our variables. So volume by sign. So this is the variable which I created. So what it does is it checks whether the uh, change in close price is positive or negative. If the change in close price is positive, the math dot sign will result, uh, result in plus one. If the change in close price is negative, then the math dot sign will result in minus one. So I've also added non-zero uh, default value of zero because for the very first bar, TA dot change of close will be NA, will result in null or NA because on a very first ball, there is no previous close price to compare, right? So because of that, the initial value will be zero. Okay, so, and then star volume. So that's what I'm, I've done here. So now we need to add this value to the current indicator on every bar. So let's create a generic variable, which is OBV regular. It's initialized with 0.0. .0. And then as per the logic, what we're doing here is um, plus the OBV indicator plus volume by sign. Uh, sorry, uh, not volume by sign, just volume by sign. Okay, so what we're doing here is um, OBV regular plus volume by sign. So just adding the volume by sign to OBV indicator on every bar. So if we print this, should we get the same result after a dot OBV? Let's see that. So I'll see this and look at this value here, which is spotted in blue and the actual built-in OBV is plotted in yellow. So you see this here, OBV by a regular variable is far less than OBV built-in. So something is going wrong, something is not right. You can also observe one more thing. This OBV by regular uh, variable is equal to is equal to volume here, right? So any bar, if you go here, the volume will be equal to the OBV by regular variable. Why is that? 
that's because this variable here gets initialized on every bar separately so this whatever we are adding it will not go back to the it will not add back to the previous bar value but it actually creates a new variable on every every bar and it just adds the volume that's why we, we always see that you know this is equal to volume so we can it can be equal to plus volume or minus volume based on the bar color uh, if it's a, if the close price is <coughs> um, lesser than the previous close it will be negative volume otherwise it is positive volume right so how to fix this so one way to fix this is uh, we can access historical value so we already uh, created this so we have a regular variable so what do you do you can also add it to um, nz again of the PV regular of previous well previous part so um, this is not an array operator again so what it does is it adds to the previous it actually gets the previous value of opv by regular so as i mentioned before this variable is calculated on every bar separately so opv regular by regular of one means that it's the previous bar value so if this is the current bar value this will be the previous bar value so in this by doing this what happens right every bar it gets added to the previous value so if you look at this now you can see that these both values are matching fine. Okay, so the next example is uh, to demonstrate where, it, uh, where, sorry. So we can achieve this by, same thing by where and not do, not by doing all these things. So let's do the same thing in where, right? So here I declare a where variable. So I mentioned that where is a different type of variable. It's not a regular variable, right? So what happens with where is it gets initialized only once. So it gets initialized on the first bar and it won't initialize again, it won't reset the value to zero on every bar. So in case of a regular variable, what happens is on every bar, it gets reset to zero here because it gets initialized on every bar. But in case of var, var, it doesn't happen that way. So it gets the value zero at the start and then preserves the value when it skips, when it moves to the next bar. So in, due to this, here we don't need to cancel, consider the previous value at all. Like, you know, how we are doing it here, the previous OBV by regular value, we're adding it here. We don't need to do that because the OBV by var already has the previous value. So what I'm doing here, I'm just adding the volume by sign here. So if I do this, it will produce a result similar to this. So let's try and see. If, as you see here, OB by uh, var variable is also 58, uh, 1856.56, which is same as this one, right? So in case of var variable, it remembers the value when you pass from one, one bar to another ball, bar. And in case of regular variable, that doesn't happen that way. In case of regular variable, it starts afresh on every bar. So if you want to keep the previous value, you need to do it manually. But in case of var, you don't have to do that. So we can just keep adding the values or you know, reducing the values as per the rule on, um, on every bar. Okay, so the next is the example of varip. Varip is another special variable that is uh, only um, important in a real time bars. So varip doesn't make uh, much sense in a, in a historical bars. It's mainly because varip works on the ticks on every sticks where it gets recalculated or it, it remembers the state of every tick so because of that you, do, you don't need um, you know historical bars doesn't have ticks in uh, trading view so because of that the calculation will happen um, you know will not yield anything special in a historical bars for example let me try this uh, this way and let me just do change it to where it so this actually works um, Similarly, so varip, um, varip, just take it as varip and varip and varip. Okay, so make it as um, red. Okay, so this will produce the same output as var because on a historical bar, the tick is same. Like, you know, a tick always refers to um, a close price, of only one tick per each bar. But if you see this, it's difference, it's diverged in the current bar. You can see that because what's happening is it's adding on every bar right it's adding this value on every bar so because of that on a current bar it keeps going up right so 
it's not a right implementation here because um, it's it's not right to you know keep adding the same values again and again on every tick. So let's say let's use this varip to calculate the OBV of based on the ticks. Okay, so I've already coded here. I'll just explain what what has been done. So similarly, varip by um, varip initial variable I've initialized it zero as into zero dot zero, and also I'm creating two other varips to store the close price and volumes, right? The last last price and last volume, right? So always um, it goes to close and volume, and I'll reset the last volume to zero on a new bar. Even when a new bar comes, I'm gonna reset it to um, zero. So and then not I will not do the logging just to remove this. So the same logic. I'm gonna apply the same logic here, but this is slight change. Instead of using um, this volume by sign, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cal calculate on my own. So mat dot sign close minus last price. So the last price contains close of the previous tick here. So if you see this, the close of the previous tick, right? And then uh, again, so this gets initialized only on the first time, right? It doesn't get initialized again. So it's only gets initialized once. And the next initialization, ha initialization happens only if you use colon equals to symbol, you know, symbols to initial, you know, initialize the value. So what I'm doing here is, so I'm using, I'm getting the difference between the last price and the current price and using it to um, reduce the sign, right? And then once it is done, I'm setting the value to the current price so that on every tick, it gets the last price gets stored and it is used in the next tick to identify the value of uh, close prices, right? And similarly, volume and last volume, right? Last volume is the last volume here and um, like you know the volume here it gets initialized to first volume um, and then what happens is um, uh, we try to get the value difference between the current volume and the last volume on every bar right once this is calculated what we set we set the last volume to current volume it will be used in the next bar our next tick right how this code works is it works in a similar way to um, this present code here with var um, in historical bars because for historical bars one candle or one bar will have one tick right so it works in a similar way but what happens in the current bar it, it actually calculates the values between the ticks so and it it start keeps adding the values based on the ticks so i'll uncomment this code and update again so if you know that uh, if you see this the same thing happens here too all the historical matches um, all the historical bars match perfectly fine and if you see the last bar so last bar it deviates so all the previous bars you see that it's same it's exa exactly same all four values In the last bar if you see the parrot value here it deviates from the rest because that gets calculated for every tick whereas this one is calculated only based on the close price Right, so it doesn't remember each tick. The when you're using a var or regular variable, it doesn't remember each tick, but varip remembers each tick. So when you use varip, the real time bar will keep uh, diverging from uh, what is the uh, when you use the regular time regular uh, variables. So so if you are using varip, that's only for the for doing something or calculating something in the real time bar. So you cannot rely on any values calculated through varip in the historical bars. Okay, so um, that's all about today's session. Please let me know uh, if you have any questions. And again, as mentioned before, if you want me to cover any other topics in PyScript, please leave a comment or please reach out to me. We'll consider that. Thanks very much. Bye.